Roxo Media House. Welcome back to Facing the Frogs. I am J.W. Wilson sitting in place of host, regular host, Jamie Plunkett, along with regular over here, Coach Dave Bowden. It's K-State week, folks, and we're coming off a huge win versus Oklahoma State last week. Uh, it's blackout week. We got a first real night game at home. We're really pumped up, Coach. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be exciting. Another sellout, blackout, 7 p.m. kickoff. I mean, this thing is going to, the place is going to be rocking. It, it, you know, I don't know if it can get any louder after last week, JW, yep. but this week here, I, I'm excited to see if we can we can top that somehow. As you know, Coach, uh, K-State comes well prepared. They always do. Last year in Manhattan, 31-12 loss uh, was a big one because it actually was the end of the Coach Patterson era. That was the game that he got fired at after the game was over. So that was what all pre presented itself, and we now we sit with Coach Sonny Dykes. We're sitting at 6-0. and We're facing a team, K-State, ranked 17 in the country. TCU ranked 8th, so it's a hell of a matchup. It's the fourth week in a row, I believe, that TCU's playing a ranked opponent. Never happened before and never been done before as far as winning all four in a row. So that's a big deal for us. Yeah, it is. They obviously got three out of the way now, and, and you know, it's a, it's a well-coached team. I think Coach Sonny Dykes talked about this being probably the most complete football team that they've played mm -hmm. so far. And that's really saying something because they've – you know, played some real quality opponents, as you know, three ranked teams uh, the past three weeks. And, and so for him to talk about that, I, I think it just goes back to K-State being a really well-coached team, ha has a lot of um, history with, you know, with Bill Snyder and, you know, his two runs. And now uh, Coach Kleiman has, has come in and, and really has been seamless in, in keeping that, that program uh, among the top in the country. Agreed. Coach Kleiman heck, doing a heck of a job up there. I mean, who wouldn't with Bill Snyder living in the same town as you? You kind of have to be on, on, on par all the time. Uh, obviously, Coach uh, Colin Klein, the former legendary quarterback from uh, K-State, is now their offensive coordinator. He, and their quarterback, Adrian Martinez, we'll talk about here in a second, he's finally running an offense that has, doesn't change from week to week like, like he did for four years in Nebraska. Yeah. That being said, the guy's playing lights out. He's a Russian phenom. He's got nine touchy, touchdowns rushing the football. So we got to put somebody on this guy for sure. We're about to break it down. You ready to get into the film? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I want to start, um, you know, as we do, we go into sort of the first uh, series, right, of their last game. Well, for, for K-State, they're coming off a of bye week. So this is against Iowa State. We're going to jump into their defense first. Uh, their defense coordinator is a, is a guy by the name of Joe Klanderman. He actually, he recruits this area. So he, he's familiar with, with DFW, so I'm, I'm, I, he has a lot of familiarity with a lot of the kids on this TCU roster. Uh, he's a guy that that um, really doesn't does a you know K State in general does a really nice job in recruiting where they're very thorough and, and you kind of see that permeate throughout, throughout their whole program, JW, right? Where they just everything they do is first class. They you know they you can tell that that they're sound in all they do, and that goes from recruiting to their schematics to their fundamentals. It's just kind of who they are, and I think that goes back to. Coach Snyder and his history as well, and, and so they haven't skipped a beat. So we'll jump in defensively, and you know, it's an odd front here. You'll see the three down front here, and then um, you know this is a motion from Ohio, uh, Iowa State, and I think this is something that you know they did a lot in. It was really smart to kind of get some indicators of what defense they're in. You know what, what defense K State is. I think we want to see this from TCU, and so what they'll do here is they invert their safety down. And so you can tell that they'll invert the safety. The corner will then go high because this turns into, once we get the, sa uh, the receiver all the way over, this turns into that nub formation. So there's no receivers on this side. Here's the tight end. And so, you know, what K-State does, I think really astutely here, is, is they put their safety down so he's more of a run support player so he can kind of set the edge defensively. And now they'll get this corner as, as a kind of a, uh, you know, on the roof, so to speak, right? And so... You know, we'll watch this thing through as they go, motion across, safety comes down, corner is now high. Coach, this game was two weeks ago, correct? This, there, so uh, Kansas State's coming off a bye week, so they, they've injured the injuries, they had a couple injuries in the game. I think, according to the press conference, they're all healed up right now, so everybody ex ex is expected to play that played in this game, but they, they're coming off a bye week, obviously gives them some added firepower, we think. Typical 3-4 front, K-State shows us almost all the time, correct? Yeah, that's right. And this is more of a traditional odd. You know, we see, of course, with TCU, the more of the 3-3 three, three stack. Um, this is more of a traditional odd. You'll see them in the stack a little bit. But this is, a, you know, pay attention. To this They always have sort of a free hitter in here. So this safety, you know, is unaccounted for. Really, when they go in their count, they're, they're used to, of course, um, you know, Coach Klein is a guy coming from North, North Dakota State. 
um, a power offense, and you you see teams offensively and defensively, especially in the leagues that they play in, match and they sort of marry one another, right? Mm-hmm. So they they really want to be in an eight man front, JW, right? They want to be get that eighth guy in the box. Well, they're sort of teetering with this guy here. You know, uh, he's he's he doesn't want to completely fully commit at linebacker level, but he wants to get out of that count and still be able to in her, insert himself into the box. And so you'll see that here. He's on a counter for. You know, he misses the tackle, but he's the one that's not blocked in this equation, right? right? right. And so that's how they're in, you know, able to add another hat to the box, so to speak. So that brings up second and five for Iowa State here in this in this initial drive. I want to go ahead and, and uh, just jump into another view here real quick, if we can. So we'll go ahead and, and, and take a look here. Coach, fair to say Kansas State might be the best defense we've seen, given all we've seen thus far, but these guys are well coached. Their linebackers are fast. The defensive linemen make plays, but best defense we've seen so far. Yeah, certainly, you know, the most the most sound, right? I mean, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna throw a lot at you, but they're not gonna avoid zones. They're not, you know, they're gonna make sure that they gap out up front all the time. Uh, so I, I I agree with you there. And you know, Iowa State, I think this is really smart. This is something that we're gonna see from TCU. Uh, if I had a guess here. You know, a lot of pre-snap snap motions, you know, mm-hmm. changing formations. What this does here, I know you talked about some of these players, JW, to open with. And, you know, on the previous play, you saw, you know, you saw a, uh, a motion and you saw the safety rotate down, corner rotate back, right? Well, this one here, they're going to motion this back out. And then this linebacker, who's their top linebacker, a guy by the name of Austin Moore, he's going to go out and match it. Okay, so now you've done two things. Right with this motion, they motion out to empty, and I, I think this is something to really pay attention to if you're TCU because what they did here was they're able to get Austin Moore out of the box, which is really nice, but it also indicates okay, we've got some type of man coverage. If he's going to leave, then you know he has the back man to man, right? So it's now told the offense okay, we, we got a man indicator, and you know, we just got their, their top linebacker, their, their leading tackler out of the box. Right, with two two things that that really going to help the offense out. So again, I think going back to a lot of that pre-stat motion is going to be critical for the Horn Frogs. Uh, and we'll let, let this one play out. This is sort of America's blitz, they call it. This is a very common odd blitz. They're going to bring the two linebackers down bottom here, and they're going to slant the the defensive line away from it, and then they're going to play man-free coverage. So you know, man underneath everywhere here. They're all. You know, it looks like zone. So again, a lot of disguise. They have looked like this umbrella coverage. But when the ball snap, you already know the the linebackers and man on the running back who motioned out. Everybody else is in man as well. You got man here. You got man here. This one's easy to see that it's man. He's looking right at him. And then this safety is going to rotate down the middle of the field. Coach, I think I've saw many places people talk about the the ability that K State does to give up big plays. So. I got one stands to reason that with our big play offensive machine that we're running right now, they got to be really worried because obviously you mentioned Austin Moore number 41. He's got 41 tackles for the season, leading tackler, but they they're giving up big plays throughout their their season thus far. So with our with our home run hitters, we got we got we have a good chance there. They're going to be on their heels most of the game, just sitting back waiting for us to make a, make a mistake or make a play, right? Right. I completely agree, and I, I think you know it's it's taking advantage of the little things, right? Like I said, they're they're sound. They want to do the right thing. They they have things you know queued up schematically, I, I think correctly. But little things like this. So this safety is supposed to rotate down the middle of the field. Well, he gets caught looking, ends up on the hash. You know, all of a sudden, if you've got something going on here with a pick route deep. You've got all this green grass over here, right? Mm-hmm. Things to take advantage of. So I think that's where some of those plays, big plays come in, where you can manipulate these safeties a little bit, you know, with Max Duggan with his eyes and, and bring them over. And now all of a sudden, you know, you open up some green grass for those big plays right, that you're right. talking about. So we'll go back to um, another view here. And I think this, this the, so they misfire there. All right, so it brings up third and five here, K-State's defense. Um, and, and again, another pre-stat motion from Iowa State. Something to keep an eye on. They motion into the boundary, and you know another snap, and something different out of K State. So you've got you get your your blitzer here. It's a simulated pressure. That's that's your four man rush, and they're going to go with an inverted sort of cover six, what they call cover six. And so what that is is you know it, it's two, uh, cover two on this side up here. You'll see cover two by these guys. So the hard corner. He's going to force everything back in. He's going to be a deep player, and then you're going to run quarters on this side. So he's got a fourth of the field. 
He's got a fourth of the field. All right, and they're going to play quarters. The reason they do that, JWs, is, you know, if there's a tight number two, right, that number two receiver here is a tight end. You know, what they're saying is, okay, I'm going to line up over the number two receiver at safety. So right here, is he tight enough where if one goes vertical, if one goes vertical and they get something out like this, can the safety get over the top? Right. And the answer is no. Right. Because this, this receiver, this tight end is too tight to the formation. So what they do is they play quarters. Now he has a deep one and, and he doesn't have to worry about getting over the top of that number right. one receiver right. on this side here. Two things they, they want to take away. And this is really you guys kind of show how smart you know, the Wildcats defense is. And they don't want to give free access into the boundary and just an easy three step throw. So they put a hard corner here. And then now also if by chance, you know, he gets something in the flat and the corner has to squat on it. Well, now, can he get over the top of number one? And the answer is yes, right? Because it's closer. And so that's why a lot of times you'll see sort of these tight side, you'll see cover two. And then to the wide side, you'll see quarters, you know, cover four. You put that together, it's cover six. And uh, it's inverted because it's not quarter, quarter, half. It's half, quarter, quarter. For anybody who cares about that, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> but I no, think that's... Sure. Yeah, sure. so then there, there's your fourth rusher. And again, you're just seeing... K-State just continue to change up looks. They're trying to disguise a lot, you know, but I think you can get away. If you're TCU, you can get them those, some of those indicators with some of those motions that we talked about. My eyes keep going down to the defensive line because that's where I know best, but the, the nose tackle number 92, Eli Huggins, uh, I like this guy a lot. He's a really a strong guy. He's a smart – he reminds me a lot of me in a lot of ways. In a couple of ways, not. He's an all-academic Big 12 performer, uh, which is not me, but this guy's a smart kid. This guy knows what he's doing. He's experienced, and you can tell he's a good-sized guy. This guy will be, a, be a someone to direct him with up front. So this three front they have, they got two defensive ends that are speedy. Up top, you got Felix, uh, number 91. He's got a name that I can't quite pronounce correctly, but the guy's really fast. So the, the defensive line, on my perspective, they're good-looking, strong, fast guys. So the coverage that you just mentioned was really interesting, but I focus myself on the defensive line right now. Yeah, no, no, I agree with you. And I think the, the guy you're referring to, I'm going to take a crack at it, is Felix uh, Annie Duque Azuma. And he's a guy from uh, Kansas City, Missouri, down here. And he was a preseason All-Big 12. Right. Um, so you're exactly right. I mean, these are guys that, that are that are big-time players, even before the season season started. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, you know, we reference Austin Moore earlier. He's another Kansas product. So they're, they're getting some... There's some guys locally as well as dipping into, you know, into Texas and stuff. And we'll talk a little bit more. The guy you have offense. circled, in fact, uh, Felix leads the Big 12 in sacks with six and a half as we sit today. So he's somebody we have to take, take a consideration of. Yeah, and I think that's why they're able to, you know, they're able to get pressure without bringing all kinds of guys, right? Because of the defensive line, which is such a nice luxury, and they can do some things in coverage. Um, you know, they can do a lot of things in coverage here. And, and I, so... If you look at this here, a lot of times they'll bring the fourth rusher. This fourth rusher here, and so again, they're, they're bringing three. This is the fourth rusher right here. It's, a, it's another linebacker, uh, Daniel Green. And it makes sense for him to be the default fourth rusher because he's got size. He's 6'3", I think 242, right? So he's a guy that, you know, look, he's almost like another defensive end out there, right? And, and so it makes sense. Now they can line him up in different spots, and this has really put some pressure on the offensive line in terms of their pass pro because you don't know where he's coming from, right? Come right. from all over. And then they can still play zone behind it. They don't have to get into man coverage because only bringing four guys. And so I, I think it's really smart. Um, you know, this is something that they're going screen to the field. And you'll see Daniel there, you know, as a, as a D lineman, JW, you, you know this. You know, you get up and you, you retrace your steps and follow it out. Well, Daniel's on the rush, and he sees the, you know, the running back and then real smart, you know, just, just falls him down, and, and, you know, they come up with an incomplete That's pass a well on the coach. screen. It's a well-coached player there, no doubt. So, uh, you know, they're, they're doing some really good things defensively. This is going to be a, you know, absolutely be a challenge. This these defense, guys. Coach Bowden, is giving up 16.7 points uh, per game, which is second in the Big 12. That's a pretty good uh, estimator of how, the, how they play. They have a plus eight turnover margin, so they're taking the ball away uh, at, at whatever they're doing. I mean, these, this is a well-coached, well, uh, fast, good, well, and well-coached uh, machine in defense. So, Yeah, there's no question. They're not going to beat themselves defensively. Yep. Um, I, I completely agree. So they get the stop there. It brings up second and 10. 
And, and again, you know, we, another snap for the defense and another coverage entirely. We, we, so, you know, this is just the first drive, and we've already, I think we've seen, you know, four different coverages. Mm -hmm. we, we've seen, you know, b with the different pressures, we've seen four different things in terms of uh, pressures and fronts. And so it's going to be a lot. You know, it's a lot on their plate uh, this week. And so here we're going to get two-man coverage, which is a very, you know, coverage-heavy defense. But, again, you can do those things because, to your point earlier, you talked about, you know, how um, – the, you know how good this defensive line is and if you can get mm -hmm. pressure with the defensive line you can do things like this and so what this is is man coverage throughout so it's man here it's man here and they've got man on these these two split backs as well and then cover two behind it so you've really protected for any of the the, the deep balls here and then you got man coverage underneath and could so what you, could you walk us through these this cover two you speak of coach yes you mentioned cover two most of us the generally the football guys know what that means but for the guy who understand cover two what are these two safeties thinking what are they looking for sure so they're playing cover two here but this is actually as a whole we're in two man coverage what they call two man so right. um on this coverage in particular it's it's man all throughout here everybody's manned up okay underneath Okay, except for one. So now you've got extra guy. You got an extra guy. You got to know what to do with him. Do you rush him? What they decide to do is spy him. And I would anticipate that against a Max Duggan, a guy who can take off and, and create plays. I'm sure they'll spy the extra man. So their man coverage throughout. They've got three rushers here. And then, you know, see, so he's the spy. And then these two, they have a half of the field. So when you talk about cover two, you're talking about they divide the deep two halves, they split it down the middle. He's responsible for this deep half. He's responsible for this deep half. And you can really come off the hash a little bit when you have man underneath. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, you can do those things um, because, you know, you've got, you've got those guys covered underneath as well. So very coverage heavy defense here. But again, it all goes back, starts with that defensive line. That's why they're able to get into those things. Look, if you don't have a defensive line that's experienced like these guys who are as good, you can't get in a defense like this. You just can't because you'll get, you'll get chewed up by any quarterback. Fair. You know, so. Uh, so again, they just keep continue to change looks, and uh, and it makes it quite a challenge for these guys. And so that brings up third and four. There was a pickup of six there. They're able to good, good, do a good job in, on picking those guys underneath mm -hmm. um, in that man coverage. So Iowa State does a good job recognizing them. that's something the TCU again has to recognize that stuff pre-snap. So on third and four. Now look, we saw empty earlier, okay, by Iowa State. So this is K State. There's really three schools of thought versus empty formation, right? You can do you know, some other things or some variations, but three main schools of thought. And that one is drop eight. You know, we saw that earlier versus empty. Um, so the, the, that's one of them. The second thing is to appear that you're bringing six guys and then pop one guy out for either a spy or to rob something underneath, okay? And that's what they do here. So you'll see them kind of pop that out late. And then the last thing, and in case state has shown this, that you want to do versus empty is bring the extra man, right? Obviously, in empty, you only got five in protection, so you can bring six in case they has shown that. So right. they, they kind of run the gamut on, on what to do versus empty, and, and they're going to give you different looks. But on this one in particular, you know, they, they give you a look here where they're going to bring, um, you know, br going to bring six, and they pop out that, that linebacker, Austin Moore, that we talked about earlier, you know, into coverage. And then, but it forces them to get rid of it because, you know, what that does is this. This tackle is set on Austin Moore. He's a heck of a player. We've, we've, you know, his name has got brought up a lot already. So they have to set on him. But now he pops out, and so now they're short because he's set on this one. He's working back out, and so they're short on one. You know, and it just it, it, they're presenting something and then doing something else. And they continue to do that whether it's in coverage, whether it's in fronts, or whether it's in pressures. They're going to give a bunch of looks, JW, and 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 so so this is going to be you know again a, a tremendous challenge. For these guys on, on Saturday, because it's a well-coached team, but it's also a team that gives you a bunch of different looks, you know, like we we just saw here. Coach, you mentioned the spy of number 41. He was spying Max Duggan in this case. Uh, I gotta believe most people who watch these two teams know that we have running mobile quarterbacks. I gotta believe both teams are gonna have a spy at some level. One's on Max and one's on Adrian, their quarterback. That's got to be a big part of this game plan. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, there, there's no doubt. You have to with, with the the legs, you know. 
uh, of these two quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. That's got to be part of the, the game plan or else those quarterbacks can be running for days. Very good. Well, I appreciate the insight there, Coach. Let's go to break and we'll come back and we'll talk some offense. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in, catering, or drive through 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best tasting sugar-free kids drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy, be happy, drink happy. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student athletes through a series of unique event based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. For exclusive interviews and content on TCU recruits, subscribe now at frogstoday.com. Any sport, anytime. It's your source for all things TCU. Only on frogstoday.com. Welcome back to Facing the Frogs. J.W. Wilson with Coach Bowden here. We're going to talk a little offense now versus uh, Kansas State versus the, the Iowa State from two weeks ago. Yeah, this is this is exciting. I mean, this is a you know as we know that Adrian Martinez, is a quarterback, I feel like he's been in college football forever, right? He uh, has. You know, and I think you go back to his days at Nebraska. He was a freshman All American, and, and so we've known this name and and what he's capable of doing for a long time now. Right. And Adrian, uh, even more so, he was four years at Nebraska, never went to a bowl game, and he, he readily admits he's excited about this year's team because one more win makes him bowl eligible. This is a good guy. He's a smart quarterback. Obviously, he's a really good performer. Uh, he wants to win this this week. He's made comments of the press to that effect. But uh, this is a guy we have to take seriously. He runs for nine touchdowns this year. I think he's leading the Big 12 in this, this team overall in rushing. This is a team that keeps the ball, Coach. When they get the ball on offense, they keep the ball and they score points. Passing is not so much as strength as, as the running is, but with an All-American running back next to him, Deuce, Deuce Vaughn, I mean, these guys are stacked in the backfield. So if we're, if we're going to match uh, the spy on, on, on Max Duggan, we definitely have to match a spy on, on Adrian because you've you got to have something on him to, uh, every, every play he's out there. There's no question about it. And, and I think that, you know, you talk about fits all the time for coaches, right? I think Coach Kleiman, as he came into K-State, was the perfect fit for that guy, right, for this job. I, you know, going from North Dakota State, same brand of football at Kansas State, right, power running, you know, always a, a quarterback that can also run – QB power and do those things and perfect fit for him. They obviously have Colin Klein, you know, the quarterback that we talked about and, mm -hmm. and, and really loved his play, right? He's the play caller and offensive coordinator for K-State. And, and now you got Adrian Martinez, who I think, you know, you're right. He, he lost a bunch, didn't go to a bowl game. He's just in the perfect offense for him, right? right. I think that, that's right. great. And you, you brought up Deuce Vaughn, who's a guy, you know, from Texas. He's, mm -hmm. he's from Round Rock. Um, I, b I believe he went to Cedar Ridge High School. Uh, out there, but he's you know he's only five six in stature. But this dude, this dude is tough. I mean, he's well right. put together, and uh, you know, and, and Coach Sonny Dykes talked about this. That he's running behind this massive offensive line, right? Mm -hmm. Big, powerful, and athletic offensive line, and a lot of times he just gets lost behind it, right? right? I mean, you know, being a shorter guy, um, make no mistake about it. He's, he runs powerful. He's tough, um, and he's quick. But but you know being shorter you just you lose him sometimes so you have to account for him the entire game certainly There's both no in the doubt. run and pass game. There's no doubt. One more comment on uh, Adrian Martinez, the quarterback. He played for Scott Frost, who recently got let go by Nebraska, but he never played for an offense that was always doing the same thing. He's had to change his offensive scheme so many times. To his uh, to his credit, he's finally in a, in a system that hasn't changed. It's definitively running the offense he's capable of running. Back at Nebraska, it was changing all the time, so he had limited success to put it mildly but here he's obviously uh, excelling in an offense that's structured around him and obviously has some legit legitimacy and it stays that course so yeah he's, he's, he's a guy we all take, take into consideration no i i completely agree with you and and you know you're right because you know coach uh scott frost was more of a game plan offense right from week to week things were going to change and you know i mean a, a coach climbing 
the team, right? They are who they are, right? It's going to be power football, come right at you. You can, you know, and then they also what they're going to do for him for Adrian. What I, I think they're doing a really good job at this year is continuing to change his launch point, right? A lot, very similar, honestly, to what TCU does for Max Duggan. You know that he's not he's not at his best when it's just straight drop back pass, right? When you just get straight drop back pass and ask him to go full field reads and all those things. Um, this is a really talented guy, but that's not playing to his strengths. Right. They, they want to keep him on the move and then complement that power run game mm-hmm. by some play actions, by you know some nakeds and bootlegs and things like that, and get him throwing on the run where he can really excel. I think right? you're exactly right. They want to put Adrian in a position to make plays, so they're going to do all kinds of different schemes on offense to do such. Why don't we look at the first series against Iowa State? Yeah, sh- certainly. So, you know, it's kind of nice to watch this film because, you know, Iowa State is really honestly where the 3-3 stack defense, um, I don't want to say it began there, but certainly arrived on the scene in the Big 12 at Iowa, Iowa State. That's where, you know, it was made popular. Mm-hmm. And so you can see the similar defense. The one big difference here that you don't see from a Joe Gillespie defense you know, his version of, of the stack, right, mm-hmm. is he doesn't like to empty the box. He likes to keep the integrity of that front intact. And so you'll see Iowa State, you know, this is first and 10, and all of a sudden, you know, they've got this guy over number two, they've got him out here, and now you've got, you really got a 3-1 box on first and 10, right? And so, you know, Colin Klein here is a play caller, and they look over to the sideline, 3-1, they, they know they're going to run the football here, right? right? And you're not going to see that from TCU, I think, that, you know, they all want to keep the integrity of that box. But there is some challenges we're going to see here in a second to doing that, right, to get in there. They go put and pull here. You can see how athletic these offensive linemen, not only are they big, this is the center. So he has to snap the ball. They're going to pin this one here and, and you know, and, and wrap the center around. The problem is I think they fit this thing really nicely. So he fits it on his inside shoulder, forcing it back in. All right, and we're going to see the middle linebacker here for Iowa State, he gets run out of the play, which isn't terrible. The problem is for Iowa State, and I think this is where TCU's got to be really careful, is he has nothing. So we'll watch him run over the top. There's no linebacker here because he's out of the box, and, and normally you know, they fit this thing to force it back in. He's going to force it here. It should bounce back inside. The problem is there's no linebacker sitting here that can make the play. Mm-hmm. right? And so for TCU, that's something that they're going to make sure that they keep the integrity of the, of the front of that defense because they're going to see a lot of this, honestly. Coach, why is Iowa State running this 3-1 box you just mentioned? Because they obviously know what we know. They know that K-State runs the ball and that they're really strong at running the ball. Why do they branch those linebackers out? What are they trying to do? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I, I think, you know, the only thing I can see is that they don't want to give up quick plays to these slot receivers, right? So they're trying to take that away. But they – and they also – you know, they're putting a lot of pressure on this middle safety to be that free runner I would think to insert so, yeah. himself, right? But that's too much. I, you know, personally, you know, don't put it on him. They call it a free hitter for a reason. It should be the or the extra hitter, right? Mm-hmm. It should be the extra. It shouldn't be the primary. And so, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that. I think it's a, it's a bad plan. Clearly it is here, and they rip off, you know, a decent run just to open up the game. But, uh, you know, it's a five-yard pickup, and they'll – K State will take that all day long, Absolutely. And, and so this is something here they got to you know be really careful with. And, and again, TCU is a, a person I think a lot smarter than that. Um, so that brings up second and five after they like said a pickup of five. They now, you know, they starting to scoot those guys in a little bit, and, and you'll see that here. And this is the challenge, right? So they misfire here. There's some miscommunication. However. Okay, they're bringing this linebacker all off the edge here. And for, for K-State, what you have to watch now is just these quick hitches inside, something inside where this safety is so far off. And so it's kind of pick your poison, right? And personally, J.W., I don't know about you, but if you're facing the Adrian Martinez team and a, and a Coach Kleiman team, right, I, the poison I'm going to pick is, is let them beat us by throwing the ball down the field. All I would agree with that. Right? You know, cut the head off the snake and say, Okay, let us beat us there. And so I think that's what we're going to see. We're going to see them challenge him and make, make Adrian Martinez beat you with his arm. Mm-hmm. He's a quality quarterback. He's good. He can spin it. But that's not really where his strength is. His strength is obviously, you know, running around, making plays. And, not, and so much so, this team, we said their running game is so strong. They, they lead the Big 12, averaging 245 yards per game rushing. I mean, this is their bread and butter, folks. There's no The passing game, it's suspect. It's their 10th in the Big 12. They can still make some plays there. Well, with our secondary, we know as playing like playing lights out like they are, 
you got to you got to stack the box on a running team like this. Yeah, I mean, you know, you've talked about Deuce Vaughn, he entering the season. So this is before the season even started. He was third in Big 12 history on yards per touch. That's mm-hmm. that's rushing and receiving. You know, that's incredible. I mean, you know, third in history, he's got a chance to climb the ladder and be at the very top by the season's end. And so he's a guy that you absolutely have to count for the entire game and make sure you're game planning around him. And so it's a dangerous combo, you know, when they start playing this two main game back here between these two these two cats, right? Absolutely. These two wildcats. Indeed. So they they misfire, like I say, there, but but again, that that's something that you want to see him, you know, put him in there where they're throwing the ball down the field. So it's now third and third and five. They get into empty. It's a little out of character for K State, you know, but um, but here's Here's what they do here, which is, I think, really smart. Again, something else I would expect from TCU. They delay blitz, and here's why. So what K-State does, likes to do is they like to get an empty. However, they'll always have somebody or, or generally have someone attached to the formation, right? So here they have this H-back right here. And so here's a guy that if there is an extra rusher, he can, he can stay in for protection, mm-hmm. okay? He sees that it's only a three-man rush, at least initially. So he sees a three-man rush, so he releases, okay? So now... What, what they do is they delay blitz here. So now they haven't accounted for that. They've released this one, so they don't have six men in the protection anymore. And you'll see a delay blitz. However, you got to make the play when you arrive, there right? You uh, because this guy's, you know, Adrian Martinez is a seasoned quarterback who's strong, 6'3", 225. Um, it's, you know, so just kind of you got to make sure that you, you make the play. But, again, look for TCU on Saturday to have some of these delay blitzes because it's really smart. It helps negate the fact that they've got the extra guy in there, you know, and some of these empty looks for protection. I think that's right. And one more note on Deuce Vaughn. You see him running. He's, he's stretched out to the right there. But Deuce Vaughn was injured in this game in the first half. He was leg whipped. He says he's fit, ready to go, and I believe he is. I mean, the guy's as agile as, as a bracket will ever see in this, in this league, maybe in this country this year. But he was injured. He's coming off a bye week, so you think he's all healed up. But he is coming off a good leg whip that took him out of the game for the rest of the game. So, yeah, and and J Dub, this is something. Look in this play here. This is where what I mean by you know they've got to take and maximize. TCU does this weekend maximize the plays that are there to be made. Mm-hmm. You know the delay blitz is there. Great call. Okay, and then all of a sudden you don't you miss the tackle, and here's where you know they've got. The wrong routes running over here. They, they're messed up. None of it matters because Adrian Martinez is a, a veteran quarterback that just makes a play. He comes up and they score, you know, three plays into the ball game. They're off to the races mm-hmm. on a broken play, right? A broken play for a touchdown. That's their first yep. series of the game. And, it, you know, it just goes to show you that, great, you can have the right call on. You know, you can have the, the, the perfect scheme, the, the right personnel, all right. those things on the field. You gotta go make the plays. That's a great point. It, that play should never have happened. It should have been a sack for a loss there and ended up being a touchdown. Exactly right. So you know, again, I, I think there'll be some opportunities for this TCU defense, but they better capitalize when 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 those opportunities come around. So we'll look at the second series because the first one was so short. We'll look at the second series here. This is the first uh, first pose- uh, play of the possession. And again, here's a look at tight end. You know, they're in twelve personnel, so one ba- one running back, two tight ends. Here they run a split zone naked on the first play. So again, getting getting Adrian Martinez out of the pocket, you know, changing that launch point. And so here they run, you know, they do a nice job. This guy looks like he's gonna run on a, on a crossing route. He comes back out. And so they create a flood here. And what that does for, Mar- for Martinez is, you know, they'll have they'll have three zone, uh, a flood in the same zone. So it's it's all three levels. To one side, so it splits the field in half for him. He doesn't have to read full field reads. He's on the run. He's able to pull up here and make a nice throw, you know, to an open receiver on the out route. But again, this is why you're so they're so dangerous in the run game. He's so dangerous with his legs that they're able to really protect this thing, and they're going to come up with chunk plays like this. And so, um, you know, again, this this is the exactly who this team is, right? Playing off of that power run game. This is a split zone look that he'll come out again and run, and run naked. And so, you know, one thing I want to go back to, they start off in a pistol set, which is the, the running back behind the quarterback. But this is not the, the pistol offense that you saw, you know, mm-hmm. Chris Olt at Nevada when this thing pistol came in. And this is really what this is for Coach Kleiman is, hey, I used to be a guy that was under center, right? 
and he wants to do run their offense that they, they've run under center just in the pistol set. So that's all they do. They come back and they, they run a lot of the stuff that they would under center. They now just, in order to just have one snap, they'll just they'll just run the pistol and run Coach, the Coach, what does that added a snap distance not being under center, what does that do for a quarterback? Yeah, so you got to be, you got to let the, the, the you know, you got to let the uh, the center know, hey, pistol, pistol, I'm in there. and come at you hot a little bit sometimes, right? Because, you know, you tend to creep up at toes at four yards instead of five, which mm-hmm. doesn't sound like a heck of a lot, but when you're taking a snap, um, it, it can be. So you got they got to communicate that, um, and I'm sure they do, but... You know what it what it does is instead of practicing all the time, you know, having under center and shotgun, you know that that's just added practice time for those guys. So I think really smart by Coach Kleiman saying, "Hey, we're just going to run our under center offense, but we're just do it in pistol." You know. So that that was uh, their first possession, and then they obviously get a first down there, so they come back to first and ten. Man, and and, and JW, when's the last time you see you know you see this fullback here again? You know, it's, it, it fires me up to see a fullback in a three-point stance in the yeah, backfield. It's a little bit of it. old-school Bill Snyder offense, i, I got to believe. That's, he probably borrowed a couple of things from Coach Snyder. That's exactly right. You know, obviously with Colin Klein being the, the play mm-hmm. caller, you know, and he's been around. I, I, I think it's nice, you know, just kind of get off, uh, you know, this series for a second. I think it's really nice how he was able to blend the two together, right? Bring his own his own style from North Dakota State. Uh, that is, you know, Coach Kleinman. But also marry that with the tradition that K State has had with mm-hmm. under Bill Snyder and and, and keep you know ha- keeping Colin Klein there. He's been with the program uh, all but one year after his playing days. He was done playing in 2012. Um, he coached there for a couple of years at K State, went to Northern Iowa for one year, and then came back. and And so I, I think it's really neat how he's able to sort of blend those things with the, you know the, respecting the the tradition and the history but also putting his mark on the program, you know, sure. really neat. I, I agree. But, yeah, this is classic K-State right here and North Dakota State from where Coach Klein was. And then, again, it's just he's in the pistol, so they're running that offense. You know, he's uh, they're running that offense like they would under center here. And this is, I'll tell you what, this play here, you said it. This is K-State classic deal, but it's also this is what North Dakota State under Coach Kleiman made their living in for so many years, winning all those FCS you know, national championships, it is true power. You know, not not just the theory of power football, but the actual play. This is this is power here. This is old school power. You don't see this very very often. You you might see this tight end man up and they'll pull the guard and all that. What you're seeing here is you get the, the kick out. He's gonna run the J path by the fullback. He'll kick out. Everyone else is blocking down here. So it's down, 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 pull around. And you're gonna see this guy come lead up through here. And it's true power football. I mean, this is exciting stuff for me. I, I, I love it. It's got to help you when your quarterback's ranked nationally number nine in rushing and your running back staying right behind him was the first team All-American last year. So. It certainly doesn't hurt, right? Mm-hmm. No, absolutely not. And, you know, I want to take a look at the end zone real quick. You know, you'll see, you know, the old school way of pulling. And this has been around for a while, but, you know, the North Dakota states of the world, the true power teams do a lot. This is a skip pull by this right guard. And you'll see what I mean by that is his right foot's going to go behind his left. And, and what that does is, if you notice, he stays square to the line of scrimmage. So if there's any kind of blitz right here or something like that, he wouldn't have to pull. He would just take that right now, and it wouldn't, you wouldn't have a linebacker run through. So, so for TCU, you know, you got to be aware of that. You can't just kind of backdoor and, and blitz those things because these guards are going to be aware of that. So you can't just replace the puller. I think, you know, it's, it's really something to note. And then he's able to, to sort of sift through there squarely and, and find it. Now, Iowa State does a really good job on this play. they got a lot of bodies in there. But this is a play for sure, Day, JW, that we're going to see on Saturday in some form or fashion uh, repeatedly, right? We're mm-hmm. going to see it over and over again uh, because they, they want to run power. When they get off the bus, those old linemen say, you know, we came here to eat a snack and run power. That's it. Right. You know, there's no, no, that's it. That's why we're here. And then and Deuce Vaughn is licking his chops, and they're also run some QB power. Uh, with Martinez, and so this is a team that you want to know who their identity is. This is it right here. So, Coach Bowden, that begs the question: If this is a power team, again, a good running team, what is a defense? Uh, what should a defense do to stop such power? Yeah. What is it? What's the appropriate strategy? It's a great question, and and TCU has shown both, right? So, there's two ways you can approach it. If you let me go back here for a second to the last play, if I can, uh, and I'm going to show you 
sort of one of the ways, right? One of the ways to box it by the, by the defensive end, and that's what they do here. They try and box it, and what that means is force it back to have these two linebackers over the top, right? So he, he's going to box it, force this thing inside, okay, inside here. He's going to fit it and keep everything to uh, – he's going to fit it with his inside shoulder, forcing it back ideally to, for this linebacker to make the play. Right. So you've got the guys to do that. You've got Johnny Hodges. You've got Jamo Jamoy Hodge, who are just bigger bodies, right, who are going to be in there and mix it up. So you've got the perfect personnel to do that. You also can do something else. You, you know, you've you got to be able to mix it up. I, I don't think, you know, to answer your question, I, I think that you're going to see so much of it that you can't just give it the same look over and over. Sure. And so the other thing is to spill it, right? And so what that means is to take this outside arm, and then in, in what they call, you know, old school football, wrong arm it, right? Bring that outside arm in, rip through, and then get vertical, trying to basically create a, a train wreck in there. With, mm -hmm. and, and that makes the, the play bounce. And now because you have those three safeties, he can run the alley and fit it and force it back in. He can run it from inside out and make the play that way. So, um, so I would expect to see TCU do both those things, both box and spill it on Saturday. So back-to-back -back plays, you saw power here. And now, you know, you, you, so now it's second and 11, all right? Most places, most traditional or modern-day offenses, we're going to air it out. We're going to screen it. We're going to have draw. We're going to have something like that. K-State says, no, it's second 11. We're going right back to some kind of power play, right? But now this time with the quarterback, um, they don't have much luck, but still it gives you an idea and a sense of what their mentality is, right? Um, so here they run – you know, this is GH, so it's the guard and the H back pulling. Um, you know, kind of a, 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 a counter look, but in the backfield, it's just it's just power. It doesn't no no counter action back there. They lead here with the with the tailback. So it goes to show you. I mean, look, that's it's not a great block here, but that's that's your five six running back against a, a three down defensive end. It was a monster in here. It shows you what this guy's made of, honestly. I mean, you know. As a runner, I, I give me that running back, a guy who's willing to, to mix it up with a big time guy and, and sacrifice for his team. And so, man, this is going to be a, a battle on Saturday. That's a great road. point you make about Deuce because you don't make All American just because you can run the ball well. It's because you do all things well, and that just proved your point. I mean, he's making blocks on guys considerably bigger than him. No, that's it. You know, you you named it. And so, you know what K State's doing here, JW, right? It's just giving you different looks in the backfield. But at the end of the day, it's the same stuff up front. So they're going to be they're going to be great at what they do, and they're just going to present it and mass produce it in, in different you know different looks in the backfield. But again, it just allows these guys to be great at pulling, at kicking guys out. So it's a lot of gap scheme stuff. They're not going to run a lot of zone and run guys. They're going to get down and they're going to they're going to pin guys and they're going to pull guys and they're trying to kick you out and they're trying to get vertical with this running back. So you know we see it from here, Martinez. This is, you know, he'll he'll break some of these now, so you have to be really sound in tackling. Um, and then the last play of this, it was third and ten. Last play of the drive, and the last play that we're going to look at into, you know, it's third and ten. They don't do anything fancy in their drop back pass game. It, it's really kind of, a, okay, let's bloody you with power. Let's play action nakeds and sort of some of those middle downs. Um, and then on third and ten, they're going to have some kind of vertical passing game. They want to get down the field. Um, they're not going to go full field reads and all that stuff. And you see that here, even on third and 10, they're taking a shot down the field. You got to make sure you're, you're really careful in that stuff. They go switch verts down the bottom, and then they'll try and run a little a little square and underneath to have a, something safe. But everything else is vertical, as you can see. One of the benefits of having a great running attack is that everybody will do stuff like this. Pack the box, and you, as you know, Coach, that opens up your passing game, whether how strong it may be or not. If, if everybody's playing the run, at some point you have to take a te you have to test them on the on the on the pass, right? Yeah, no, absolutely, and, and you know, and but again, you can see how this is they're a little bit more uncomfortable in this, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the key for this the TCU defense is, you know, let's get force them, and this sounds sort of cliche, but in this week I think it's really important. You know, you got to get them in third and long situations, right? So how do you do that? You know, well, let, let's make sure you, you that you're sound. You don't take too many gambles defensively where you're giving up these big plays you're keeping everything in front of you you're making sure you, you know you're sure tackling taking care of those things like we saw earlier how they can hurt you if you don't mm -hmm. um and that way they're forced these third and longs where martinez maybe isn't as comfortable right and, and so because this is the stuff they want to do they want to go vertical here they're vertical here 
Berkeley, and they just have one guy underneath on third and ten. You know, most places will have all kinds of spot routes and things all over. This is it for them, right? This is their their drop back pass. Pretty it's vertical. Pretty That's right. Good, right. Yeah, it is. Um, so as much as possible Saturday, JW, I think you know TCU's defense really needs to make sure they get them in these situations where Martinez again is not as comfortable as he is just running around. And you mentioned one thing earlier that I want to re- retouch one more time, but how, how well coached they are. I think you said a couple times they both did, but. They, they are the fewest penalized team in, in the Big 12, but as we said today, because of that coaching. So this team does not make a lot of uh, mental errors in that regard. So that's, that's actually another positive for their, for their coaching staff. Yeah, no, I, I, these are, you know, Saturday you're going to see, there's a reason why it doesn't have an accident that you've got a team, you know, that's undefeated versus a team with just one loss that mm-hmm. lost to a really good Tulane team early. Um, you, you know, that, that we all talk about maybe the best, you know, group of five school in the country. So uh, that doesn't happen on accident, right? These are, these are well-coached, well-disciplined teams on both sides. That's why it's going to be, not only is it going to be physical, not only is there a lot on the line, it's a night game, it's a blackout for TCU, but it's also some really good football, and I know that's something that you're going to enjoy just There's seeing no some doubt. good stuff. There's no doubt. Thanks for joining us on Facing the Frogs. We look forward to seeing you guys at 7 o'clock, 7.30 at Amon G. Carter Stadium this Saturday night. Blackout. Don't forget to wear your black. Uh, For Coach Dave Bode, I'm J.W. Wilson. Thank you for watching Facing the Frogs. We'll see you next time. Roxo Media House.